Thank you both for coming and having this conversation. This is Eustacia Cutler and Tony Atwood. And today they're going to talk about AI and the effect that it has on autism. And we're going to start out with Eustacia, who is um, an author and the mother of Temple Grandin. And she also just celebrated a birthday. I'll let her tell you which one it was. And so we're very happy to have her. She's an expert on autism. She has done so much for so many families. And we're so glad that she and Tony are going to get together. And I'm going to let her introduce Tony Atwood. Well, Tony, it's an honor and a privilege to introduce you. You're the top authority on autism and Asperger and a professor at Griffin University in Australia. Uh, whether it's Australia or whether it's the United States or whether it's family or whether it's professional, you are the one we turn to. And we turn to you first for neurological information and second, more important, for your sense of social connection. So it's a real joy to introduce you, Tony Adler. Your comment on social connection. Yes. When I first met an autistic child, that was my first concern. Way back in 1971, we were both much younger then. We were both and, younger, yes. And it was that sense of difficulty in making a connection both ways, which yes. became so important to me. And that's the area, in a way, that I focused on. Now, Eustacia, this is your opportunity for a discussion on artificial intelligence. So let's get going. Oh, well, let's get going. Well, we've, uh, one of the things both Chris and I felt was we needed some definitions of words. So mm -hmm. let me fish for my dictionary definitions. Here they are of certain words, uh, starting with intelligence. And as you have said to me, Tony, there are many, many kinds of intelligence. But I started with the Oxford Dictionary, which said, intelligence is the ability to learn, understand, and think in a logical way about things. The power or act of understanding. I looked it up in my old dictionary, which goes back to, uh, it's a Webster, going back to 1945. And it said, it, intelligence is the intellect or mind in operation. Mm. Now we come to artificial intelligence. And it says it is, and that I Googled for, the simulation of human intelligence processes by machine, especially computer systems. Now, there's one other definition I felt we ought to have. Oh, the definition of autism. I looked up that. It said autism is a neuro, neuro, neurodevelopmental condition of variable severity with lifelong effects that can be recognized from early childhood, chiefly characterized by difficulties with social interaction and communication and by restrictive or repetitive patterns of thought and behavior. It doesn't mention as, which I think both you and I feel is important, is the social connection. I've always felt it is not a disorder it is a disconnection. I, I, I agree. And, and when I particularly talk to autistic teenagers, they are desperate for connection. They're looking for a group to connect with. But unfortunately, they may connect with a group that's not appropriate for them. But it is that connection is so important. Well, what do you do uh, when, it is a con when it isn't suitable? Because that uh, is a connection uh, that that they don't handle well. Uh, they or they get too close to people. They don't understand. 
they don't connect. It's no, as they as don't. As... And and it may be, for example, a group that are involved with alcohol and drugs. And they fit oh. into that group and they find that alcohol and marijuana alleviate their anxiety. Or it may be a group that are very involved with diet and eating problems. And to fit into oh. that group, sometimes they may follow the pattern of that group with their anxiety and control. And in the autistic knowledge base of calories and so on, they become an expert for that particular group. So sometimes I'm concerned that they may connect with a group that may not be good in the long term. I hadn't thought about that. Uh, because I haven't had to, you're handling this daily. I, I haven't been in the circuit. Uh, mm. I've been writing instead. Uh, this is this is important because then the next thing that brings up is uh, the question of uh, artificial intelligence and how they you're you're dealing with young adults. Uh, what does about the, the robot? How do they handle that? And the definition of a robot I had here was uh, a machine resembling a human being and able to replicate certain human movements and movements and functions automatically. I think my thoughts on, on autism here is that the problem is connection with people not with animals not with machines like computers and so i think one of the the components here is that an autistic person enjoys intelligence it is something that is comforting for the person that their intellect can solve particular problems and so on so there is a pursuit of intellectual knowledge it is something that is a lifetime pursuit for that individual but connecting with people is not something you can easily read in a book or a computer program will do that so i do find that the person lacks a connection but what they're looking for is social and emotional intelligence well the word i keep running into now is what they call masking uh, where they're trying to appear not to be autistic right if we look at, at various components of intelligence one is looking at systems and patterns mathematics is the study of patterns and many autistic individuals are good at analyzing systems and patterns now, if you're not very good socially, you watch, you analyze, you look for systems and patterns and rules. And when you have connections in the sense of when somebody does this and says that and so on, you've got a social rule. And so the masking, the camouflaging is a coping and connection mechanism to try and engage with people using your intellect rather than intuition and can do it so well as the mask and the act is created they should be awarded every day an oscar for their performance as being like their peer group but it's exhausting there's a lack of the real say, self the yes. their energy runs out yes and, and i it think does. we see that with uh young people who will they'll say well they don't have autism because they're so social and you look at them and go, everything that you see is all learned behaviors that they've taught themselves, but it's totally learned. There's nothing in there that's spontaneous. And it's, but it's so good and so smooth that you would assume that is a very socially adept person and not at all. Yeah. Th there's another reason for, for camouflaging, and that is to prevent being bullied and teased. The oh, target yeah. for bullying and teasing is someone who's different. And if you're different, you're seen as an easy target. So to avoid being bullied and teased, to be part of a group and engage with others, 
it's a very appealing way of connecting but it's not being the authentic self now one of the things i admire about temple is she's always been the authentic temple <laughs> she's never been anyone else temple is temple and yes she is yes she is. yes and so but it, what it I'm took doing... a lot of help starting at the age of two yes the, uh, uh, what was a great help was uh Boston Children's Hospital recommended speech lessons. Now it gave Temple two things. It took her nearly three years to learn to talk, but it put her in connection with other children who also couldn't talk. And she had a sense of herself in relation to other people at the age of two. She realized she had to wait her turn. One of the things we've, we've picked out over the years is an autistic person has a different way of learning and thinking. And on an intelligence test, it's a very uneven profile of abilities. Now, the standard school curriculum is based on conventional thinking. Yes. And often in autism, the best learning is solitary, now with a screen. And it's a different way of learning, but also an association with learning difficulties, dyslexia, dyscalculia, and so on. So each autistic individual has a unique cognitive learning profile, which is very difficult for the teacher to know and adapt when they're teaching. Now, if you have artificial intelligence, the program can then absorb the learning style of the autistic individual and make the curriculum oh. autism friendly for that autistic person. So oh. that's, that's one way that it is really going to help teachers who don't have the time or perhaps know and have enough information of their own to develop the program. It would be gathered through the uh, artificial intelligence. So, so yes, it, uh, it, yeah. It, it and, means that it, it takes three to six months for the teacher to learn that profile. And you've only got three to six months left of the year. So if you can do that right at the beginning, then there's a greater chance of academic achievement. So, so what about the output? Because we know that their children will now be able to use AI to help them write papers or uh, do projects and, and you say she's very concerned about that. That's probably going to come up in our concerns. But what's the benefit of a child being able to use AI for that, for a, a product? Do you see any benefit? Or I think in autism, if you're not getting a thrill from social engagement, you get a thrill from knowledge. And it is very intoxicating. And so the person, it, it, we use the phrase in English, to go down a rabbit warren that once they start exploring a topic, they keep clicking on this and that and so on, absorbing like a sponge all the information. So there is a tendency in autism to be, uh, to have a mind like an encyclopedia and it will help encyclopedic minds. Okay, well, that's, that, that leaves us with uh, some real advantages that, I mean, that's a way a child could really shine in a classroom because they could now shine with their own information, but also bring all this other information into it. And they would feel very good about themselves because they could use that. But then they would learn it from seeing it. They would then absorb it, I'm they assuming. Would. But also that there's a suggestion that the genes of genius are the same as the genes for autism. And one of the benefits of autism is a different way of problem solving and diversity in bringing together things that other people wouldn't bring together. So by in artificial intelligence, exploring many different aspects of knowledge, they may have the opportunity to bring it all together to have a unique problem solving approach. Oh. It's based on what, what's troubling me is it's based on systems. And it's systemizing thinking rather than empathizing. Ah. The empathizing isn't there. 
but the systems is. And yes. The, uh, what bothers me is systems like science, mathematics, it can be proved. There's an answer. There isn't any answer to social e exchange. It's a choice. It, it is, but I, I want to delve into this a little bit more. Artificial intelligence is very good for knowledge and problem solving. In neurological terms, it's the frontal lobes of the brain. But what it doesn't do is use chemistry and endocrinology, which is the basis of emotions like love. And so you have to have a completely different system of biochemistry, neurotransmitters, endocrinology, the hormones, to really experience feelings. So artificial intelligence will not be able to duplicate human feelings. And you, Stacey, you've said that quite often. Well, what yeah, happens I, I, I have yeah. thought about it only from a social point of view, but I felt the same thing. It, it couldn't. Uh, one of the things I came up with is, uh, began to think about was, we laugh. Nobody teaches a baby to laugh. Babies laugh. Yes. It, it, <laughs> it's, a, it's just a very uh, human act. And we yes. often laugh when we run into friends uh, or something doesn't quite work out. It's, it, we, we laugh about it. It is. And I would say this is like with a, a two people or a group of people. There's what we call a chemistry. And artificial intelligence cannot create the chemistry. No, and it can't imagine. Uh, I liked the comment of a, a movie director the other day. He said, if you can't imagine the scene, you can't film it. Yes. The director can imagine something that doesn't exist, but he will make it exist. Yes, that's so true. Uh, yes, it, it, the problem is it, it relies on current or previous experience, not going into, shall we say, purely abstract futures, the person would find the artificial intelligence is not designed to do that. Well, how do we get the good out of it? And how do we explore and present to people the, the, what we must be wary of? Before we okay. rush in and say it's going to answer everything. Okay, the, this week, uh, the, there was a positive that I hadn't thought of. A colleague of mine has said, Tony, as you're coming up to retirement and you'll be stopping your clinics, she said, we could use artificial intelligence to go through all your books and especially all your reports. There's tens of thousands of reports of following individuals for 20, 30 years. She says the wisdom in that is amazing. We could create an artificial Tony. In other words, it looks like me, but I, what I'm having to say to many oh. of my families is I, I won't be able to see you again. But then I could. And if ever they wanted some information, they could type it in and I will be able to give them the answer that they're seeking or explanation that they're seeking based on my collective wisdom. And I would love the families to have access to that. Well, and and it's pretty much what you do, isn't it? I mean, I'm sure you still get things that you go, well, that was unexpected, but probably not a lot. I'm sure there's fewer and fewer times when something happens and you go, I never would have seen, I've never seen that before. I'm sure you've seen just about everything now. And so someone coming up with, I mean, I, I'd see there'd be very few questions that you couldn't answer with your wealth of knowledge. My question is, will you be there on the screen doing it? Is there going to be a little Tony person on the screen? Will you be an anime? I, I think it would be a person on the screen. And as much as they, they, they will show you on YouTube, this is Tom Cruise, but it's not Tom Cruise. Right. Uh, and so it's, it's me, but it's not me. However, yeah. it can be a way of accessing because uh, it, 
it can be, and this I is an interesting it's... way, of, of recreating your grandmother, for example. Uh, and so there can be a way of connection that will right. be fascinating. But those are the positives. However, I must admit there are many negatives I'm concerned about. Okay. Well, let's talk like about what? some of the negatives. Yes. Eustacia has a lot of negatives too. She does not want to get in a car. I feel very wary about it. Okay. I think one of my first concerns is fake news that seems very real, but can have a political agenda. And I am concerned of the recruitment of autistic individuals to extremist organizations that will promise connection, an alternative family, very clear and rigid rules of conduct and behavior, and may then move into directions that are extremist in that lonely needing connection that can be misused by certain political and religious groups. So we could have an evil Tony, is what you're saying. Oh, uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it, it, it's possible. But but uh, what I'm concerned is that, that we would, what would happen you know. is that the right. autistic person is, is interested in um, a particular theme out of curiosity. And then there are systems that will spot that that person's interested and will start to feed them the information which will consolidate a particular perspective and then find that that person can be manipulated to do whatever the organization wants them to do. No, I, I agree with you. And I see some of that with young people who get involved with um, getting a wife in a foreign country, something like that, where it's a very, where the people aren't even really the people that you're talking to. And it's a very manipulative system and someone can, and we see it all the time. It's not just people with autism. People get taken advantage of and lose a lot of money through things like that. So it would just be a very organized, a artificial intelligence doing the same thing would really be fine tuned. And you could, yes, destroy somebody, take all their money, put them in a place where they're in danger just for sport. I mean, now, yes, horrible. may happen to a non-autistic person is you have fr close friends and family that you disclose this to. And they say, whoa, whoa, I wouldn't trust that. No, no, that's not good. But in autism, there's a tendency to be solitary and not to disclose those things. And so there isn't a natural uh, second opinion occurring. And once in that determination, they go down a particular path, they will want to go through it to the end, to have closure, to explore every aspect of it. And that concerns me that it may not be um, interests that are safe. That, that's a huge possibility. Yeah, or people. even meaningful. They may not, yes. It, yeah. uh, what, we're, uh, what we want is we talk about wanting our children to be happy. It always seems to me well, is we want them to be fulfilled as they yes. see themselves as fulfilled. But now you're mentioning the fact that they can get fulfilled in a way that isn't healthy. In, indeed. <laughs> and I'm, I'm <laughs> sure th this is where, to a certain extent, the FBI and other agencies look at profiling. And one of the characteristics that they need to consider is an autistic person. It also means legally. If the person is charged with a particular offence, how much has autism contributed to mitigating circumstances in terms of responsibility? It opens up all sorts of issues. Yeah. Well, then the most important thing is that people know this. Yes. Knowledge. Uh, how do, it's this, how do, to work to spread knowledge shared information yes and and the importance to encourage the autistic person to share where they're going and what they're doing yes and and they won't if they're 
if part of the manipulation with the things they're getting is to not to even reinforce more stay isolated just stay with us yeah, yeah. one of the the characteristics i've picked up with autism over the years is the concept of trust yeah. And that has been broken by peers of bullying and teasing and being taken advantage of and often abused. And so the organization will understand the psychology of autism and focus on trust. You can trust us. You can't trust anyone else. And that leads almost to a sense of paranoia. Uh, it just doesn't sound very healthy to me. Yeah. No, it's, but it, it's already yeah. there. Um the, the, but they, all this points to the need for what I see too is it, it's not just that families need to understand, schools need to understand, small communities need to understand. We need to spread some kind of information. I've had note of uh, small towns that had autistic children and they wanted to help them. They didn't know how. Even here in New York, when I went to a school a good many years ago, and it's probably still true, they said, I said, I wanted to come and see the uh, autistic class. And they said, oh, please come. The city gave us money, but nobody told us what to do with it. Yes. Because the information isn't, we need to make it more. How do we make it more available? Yes, I think artificial intelligence may have an opportunity to do that, to pass on information. I think that there are some positives, but it, it's like uh, a screen. A screen is neutral. It's what you're watching on the screen that counts. And that's the problem with artificial intelligence is where are they going with that? I see it as the, the most benefit is going to be for people working with children with autism, not for the person with autism themselves. But I do like the teachers also evaluating children with autism. I think AI, when you, you plug in all the things the child's uh, you're seeing with that child and it comes up with some direction for you to go, I think that's going to be helpful and say, oh, this child is, you know, probably got a lot of sensory needs that you're missing. Um, so I, I think it could be very useful in that sense, but for the person with autism, and then of course, for the people who will just do bad things, I mean, they're just out there. I mean, I don't know. And helping someone avoid it. I think that's something that teachers are going to have to be, and parents, everyone's going to have to be very aware. As Eustacia says over and over again, we've got to look at this and really figure out what we're going to do as people who help people with autism. But how do we how do we achieve that? That's what I want to know is how do you get the the word out? I think a more lot videos of people like that, and on, a, a, on our website of the TDEC, your hit, Tony, it gets hit over a thousand hits. More than okay. so somebody went to to and, and they will after this one, they will they will come. Now we need to increase that. How? How to get the word out? Cooperation between people like you and I who have experience and wisdom of autism. We know the autistic way of thinking. We know some of the challenges, yes. but also autistic people do as well. So I'd see a collaboration between expertise in autism in terms of either family or uh, professionally, but also autistic individuals themselves to point out what the dangers could be. Because sometimes an autistic person is more likely to accept advice from another autistic person than necessarily a professional. That's so excellent it's, point. Yes, yeah, it's, it's very true. Yeah, uh, and that credibility is going to be important. So if it comes from autistic individuals, I think it's going to be far more powerful. Thank you both. Uh, Tony, you're amazing. We we always like having you here. And you, you and amazing. Eustacia, you're so wonderful because you have so many friends that love to talk to you. So hopefully, well, um, <laughs> could you could you take, a, take it away for us, Eustacia, with a, a lovely thank you and goodbye to everybody? And well, I, I, 
uh, to repeat what I said before, uh, we come to you, Tony, all of us, whether it's just what we always did in the past. Now we've upped the ante and we've got artificial intelligence. We turn to you. And Thank you. Treasure your words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Eustacia, I treasure your words too. Your wisdom, well, your insight. You are awesome in what you know and how you have supported autism well, well, so i'm looking forward to meeting again this is the oh, I love it. Time. yes yes please. okay i yes. ask you i leave you with a comment choose another topic and we'll meet again <laughs> all right